Okay, hello and welcome to you wherever you may be in the world. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the little video that we showed before and um, the reason we're showing this is because it is an example of our students work. Uh, my name is Thomas Abraham. I am the director of the Master of Journalism program here at Hong Kong U. And before I go any further, can all of you hear me? Can all of you hear me? And can all of you see me now? Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Okay. Um, before I introduce myself and JMSC, I'd also like to, to introduce you or let you know we've got a whole team of people here working behind the scenes to, uh, to get this um, webinar going. There's AJ, um, uh, one of our tutors whom you've already uh, met. There's Jason Hui, the uh, program officer for the MJ program, whom I think a lot of you have been um, in touch with. Um, then we have Horatius, who is our technical officer. We have Poon, our webmaster. And we have two of our alums as well to answer questions for you, Stephanie and Kevin Kuro. So all of us will be here to um, answer your questions and let you know a little bit more about JMSC, our program, and what makes us tick. Let me introduce myself a little bit more fully because, in a sense, I'm very typical of the kind of faculty who will teach you here at JMSC. I was a journalist for 25 years. Uh, my last job in journalism was as the chief editor of the South China Morning Post, which is the main English language newspaper here in Hong Kong. And before that, for more than two decades, I worked for one of India's biggest newspapers, The Hindu, um, and I was a foreign correspondent with them for many, many years. Um, I was based in London. I was based in Geneva, Switzerland, and I was based in Sri Lanka. So I've covered wars, I've covered peace talks, I've interviewed presidents and prime ministers. And in short, I have had the privilege to be a witness to historical events. And that is why I'm so excited that so many of you are interested in journalism and have signed up for the webinar, who have sort of applied to our program, because this is what journalism is about. It gives you the opportunity to be eyewitness to history. And our job here at JMSC and at the MJ program is to help you to become an eyewitness to history. And I'm sure you'll all agree with me that there's no better time than now to be a witness to history. I mean, just look at the headlines around us, right? Okay, so with that, let me tell you a little bit now about our program and what we do and what you can expect to study here. Now, I'm going to talk for about maybe 20 minutes um, and then we will take questions. You can take questions to me, but you can ask questions anytime because we've got four or five people uh, who, are, who will answer your questions. So please put questions into, you, into, the, um, into the chat box whenever you feel you have something to say. And once I stop talking, and I hope I don't talk too much, if I do talk too much, somebody here will stop me, um, I will answer uh, questions from you directly as well. Okay? All right. So let me tell you a little bit. Oh, by the way, this photograph that you see in front of you, this is Elliot Hall. Uh, it's one of the historic buildings in Hong Kong University. And this is our home. So let me tell you a little bit about ourselves. Now, you know, we there are many journalism schools across the world, in the region, and so on. So let me I'm going to focus on why we really are different. Our vision, first of all. Now, our vision is to tell Asia's story. That's why, that's why we exist, and that's why and we believe that Hong Kong is the ideal place to be based to tell Asia's story. We're part of China, 
And everybody agrees that what happens in China over the next couple of decades is probably going to determine what happens in the rest of the world as well. And plus, we are short distance from every other major Asian capital. And so I think we ideally place, and this is why, this is what one of our missions is, to be able to tell Asia's story. The other thing which makes us different from many, many other journalism schools is that we focus on journalism. We are a professional training school for journalists. So unlike other schools, other schools of communication, we don't teach advertising, we don't teach public relations, we don't teach any other form of communication except journalism. So that's what makes us tick. And the other thing I think which distinguishes us from many other schools is that we have a really international student body. We have an international faculty and I believe we have a world-class program in one of the world's top universities, the University of Hong Kong. So this in a sense gives you an idea of what we are all about. And let me tell you a little bit about the master's program itself. So every year we take between 60 and 80 Master of Journalism students, candidates. Um, it's a one-year full-time course or a two-year part-time course. Uh, we have eight full-time faculty and we have 10 to 12 adjuncts and visiting professors. And these adjuncts are people who are working in major news organizations here in Hong Kong. So they're full-time journalists who also come and teach. In addition to which, we have full-time faculty as well. And our faculty are all experienced professional journalists who have worked at the world's major news organizations. And we have a couple of media scholars as well. So we do professional training, but we also do research on journalism and on the way the media works and the way the media relates with other social institutions, other parts of society, and so on. Um, I would invite you to go to our website, the JMSC website, to find out more about our faculty um, and our adjuncts. And as I said earlier, I think one of the things that really helps our students is the fact that the faculty and our adjuncts really work at or have worked at major global news organizations. And that really helps in terms of placements, in terms of getting jobs, and we don't teach out of textbooks because we are teaching you things that we have done for over two decades. And I think this is what unites all of us, the entire faculty, full-time faculty and adjuncts. Our big, big motivation is to pass on to you all that we have learned in our careers in journals. Who are our students? Um, uh, we have an international student body and last year, this is the 2014 intake, around 47% of our students were from mainland China, uh, about 42% were from other parts of the world and about 11% were from Hong Kong. Um, and this proportion varies, I mean, but roughly it's about, in some years it's about one third, one third, one third. Um, and some, some years the proportion varied, but we truly have a global student body. And I think that's one of the strengths, another strength really, of, of, of um, studying here because, you know, one of the things about taking a professional course is really for you to network with other students as well. And in the process of meeting other students, other professionals from all over the world, you're building up a network of contacts. And 10, 15 years down the road, you will know people, you will know people in prominent journalists in almost every continent of the world through, through the networks that you build while studying here. What is the background of our students? Um, about a third of them came with prior journalism experience. Um, and about a third came from other professions. So we have had um, you know, we've had lawyers, we've had engineers, we've had teachers, 
uh, people from a variety of backgrounds who have worked maybe for five, six years and then suddenly decided that, hey, what I really want to do in life is be a journalist. So they come and study. And our program, this one year program, whatever your background, within one year, we will teach you the tools that you need to be a journalist. Right? We can't make you an excellent journalist. We can't make you a great journalist in a year. That takes years and years of experience. But we can give you the tools that will allow you to function as a journalist in this modern world. Now, you're all smart people. And you've been listening to me and you say, yeah, yeah, okay. But what happens after that, right? What, what happens to the students? Where do they go to? So here are the figures, the employment figures for the class of 2014. And the figures are still coming in because people just graduated fairly recently. And already about 50, more than half the class have already got jobs in media and public relations. Um, another 6% are working in as freelance journalists. So roughly 60% are working newspapers, news organizations, some in public relations, even though we don't teach public relations, PR companies, we give students the skills that many PR companies uh, want. And so they are in demand for public relations companies as well. Um, we have an, about 23% who are in non-media employment, and this could be anything from research to um, working in government, um, and we don't quite know, but these are non-media jobs. So another 23% are non-media jobs and about 17% we still quite don't, don't quite know where they are and what they're doing. So we're trying really hard to find out. Uh, but this gives you a snapshot of what our most recent batch of graduates are doing. All right, so what are you going to learn here? Well, one of the things here, you will be wandering around with cameras uh, like all your like these former MJs here. So clearly you're going to learn photography, but let me tell you what else you, what, what you're going to be doing. Um, the requirements for the MJ degree. Now this, it, it'll take you one year full time or two years part time um, to, to, to get your degree. And you need to complete a minimum of 30 credits to graduate, which is 10 courses. So you will take 10 courses, 30 credits, Four of these courses are compulsory and six would be elective. So let me take you through these courses. Now the compulsory courses, the core courses, are the basic tools and principles you need to be a journalist in this day and age. Um, they, include, they are reporting and writing, a course on digital journalism, its principles and tools, video news production, and media law and ethics. So these are your basic core courses which everybody is going to take. In addition, we have a variety of specialist courses in areas such as business and financial journalism, entertainment, arts and culture, long-form feature writing, radio news, reporting health and science, which is something that I teach, reporting China, uh, global affairs, news editing, photojournalism, data journalism. So you will have a variety of courses to choose from. One of the things that um, we that also set us apart from other uh, many other similar journalism programs is that we have a full time internship officer who puts students in touch with employers for internships. So the bulk of our students go on internships. They work in news organizations in Hong Kong, in China, and in the region. Um, and this typically happens in December, that is in between, uh, be between the first and the second semester. There's a six week break and people go all over for internships. So we've had students, of course, in Hong Kong, in China. We've had students go to Nepal. We've had students go to Indonesia. We had students go uh, to Burma. Um, and so we have contacts with news organizations across the region. And this really gives 
valuable experience and on-the-job training to uh, students. Okay, where do our students work? And I think this is also essential because I mean, this is the whole point of a professional journalism and the program, and this really is the mark of the value of a professional journalism program. Who employs our students? We have students in every major international news organization now. Um, we are fortunate in being in Hong Kong, which is still a big headquarters for many global news organizations. So we have students, uh, we have our former students, in, uh, of course, in the South China Morning Post, which is the major English long, uh, language newspaper here. But we have students in Bloomberg, we have students in, in C at CNN, uh, we have students at Reuters, the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, across the whole spectrum of international news organizations, us, we have students and our students are in demand from these organizations as well. So because they know we have good students, we take good students, we train them well. So in terms of jobs, and this, and this really is, it, it's a hard because getting a job in any profession these days is not easy. Job markets are tight and I can't say that Everybody walks into a job. But what I can say is that our top students have never had a problem in getting employment. So if you're accepted and if you're good, if you do well, you can be pretty sure that you will land a good job at a major international news organization. I think one of the values well, one of the benefits from studying here really is also the opportunity to meet leading industry figures. And so we have guest speakers from everywhere. Actually, the photo you see here is of Ruby Yang, who is an Oscar winning documentary filmmaker. And when this photograph was taken, I think about three or four years ago, she was a guest speaker, but now she's actually on our faculty and she teaches our documentary film production course along with another teacher Nancy Tong and um, Ruby really is an example of the kind of quality that you would find here in terms of, of, of teaching. Uh, this is Christy Lu Stout, the uh, CNN news anchor who comes pretty often to speak to our students um, and this is the gentleman you see with the beard um, to the extreme left of this photograph is uh, Masood Husseini, who is a young Afghan photojournalist who worked for AFP, the French news agency, and he won the Pulitzer Prize for Photography in 2012. And he visited us here at GMSC the same year and spoke to our students. Um, he talked about his photography and you can see, um, and he spent quite a lot of time speaking with the students. And this, by the way, is the photo that he won the Pulitzer for. I don't know if any of you have seen um, this photograph or whether you remember it, but it's, it's really striking, isn't it? This is a photograph of the aftermath of a bomb explosion in Kabul. And the little girl that you see in wearing green standing in the middle of the photograph, um, she's standing there screaming because all her family members have been killed in this explosion and she is the only surviving member. So talk about being a witness to history. Okay folks, all of you are smart and you want to know what the bottom line is. So how much, what does this cost? Now for local students it's between, and let me, uh, for, for the overseas students, before uh, you get too alarmed, let me explain to you that this is in Hong Kong dollars and it's roughly eight Hong Kong dollars um, to the US dollars. So you need to multiply these figures, uh, divide these figures, sorry, by eight in order to get the US dollar figures. You're all smart. So I'll allow you to do the division yourselves. So for local students, it costs between 124,200 and 149,040 uh, to get your MJ degree, depending on how many units you take. Um, overseas student pay between 144,900 and 173,880. Once again, 
uh, depending on how many units you take. So that's what it costs. And, you know, I know it's hard. I mean, you know, it's hard to pay for education these days, not just here, but everywhere. But I'd like to think, but I think you need to put this in context as well. And if you get, if you do well and you get a job, you should be able to pay this amount back or you, within the first six months of employment, you should be able to make this amount back. So I think this is a way really to, in, in terms of you're thinking about investing this amount of money in your education, um, I think you should ask yourself, how long is it going to take me back to pay it back once I start working? And the answer here would be about six to seven months if you do well and you get a good job. So uh, hopefully that will put all of this in context. Um, all right, let me just go back there. And this is a question that, I, the other question that we have that is on everybody's minds, and that is, are there scholarships on offer? Now, unfortunately, we never have enough money to aid or support all the students who want or perhaps uh, or, or who, who need money. But we do have money to support more than a handful of students. And so what I would say to all of you is don't worry too much about are there scholarships. The thing to do really is to apply and to get in and then if you're really determined and if we feel that you will do well in the program, we will do our best to try and find ways to support you. So here are some of the dates for you to remember. Uh, the review of applications actually began on the 1st of December and we already have several hundred applications. The deadline for applications is the 31st of January, um, a couple of weeks down the road from now. Uh, we will hold a qualifying exam in February 2015, and um, the exam will be physically held at, in Shanghai, in Beijing, and here in Hong Kong. And we will notify those who make it to this stage of the dates uh, a little later. Uh, we will hold interviews in March, and by the end of March, we hope to be able to um, let you know whether you've been accepted or not. So here's how you stay in touch with us. Of course, you can always email, we can chat, and you're getting to know uh, uh, several of us already. So, uh, but otherwise, our admission page um, is one place you should always go to, uh, Facebook. Twitter and all of these details we will email out to you and um, I think probably have all of this on the chat window maybe somebody can give it to you there and also I think it's really useful for prospective students to be able to talk to former students so you already have uh, Stephanie and uh, Kevin who are in the chat room right now but some of our alums oopsie we have lost. Okay. Now, what, 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 what I'm going to do, we have, um, just give me a minute. All right. So we, we have two of our alums in the UK and in the US who have very kindly also agreed to answer your questions. Um, our alum in the UK is Philippa Stewart. And hang on, we'll, we'll just make this a little bigger so that you can see. And these are her contact details. And I know the contact details are probably tiny for you right now, but we will try and put, we will put it into the chat room. And in any event, um, all of this will be put up on our website as well. And in the US, one of our former students, Daniel Goodman, he is also available for you uh, to, 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 to talk to if you want. Okay, so I think it's time that I kept quiet and um, I know you guys have been asking all sorts of questions and I think we have a pretty, pretty busy um, chat room already, but I'm happy to, to take questions as well now from you guys. 
And what I'm going to do is type your type your questions in, and what I will do is I will respond to you um, uh, verbally. But uh, type your questions in, and I will get to you. Okay, okay, the number coming in. So let me start with uh, one from Hui, Hui Chun Lin. What do you care most when choosing suitable candidates at the online application stage, the academic background, or the open question? You know, we look, all of these things are important. And the, that's why we ask for all of these details um, in, 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 in the application form. So you will need a strong academic background because otherwise it's really hard to cope. You also need, we also look for people whom we think will be good journalists and we also try to look for people whom we think will be leaders in the field of journalism. So let me take a, a second or so to, 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 to tell you about some of the qualities that we look for. What makes a good journalist? Um, I'm sure all of you will have your own ideas and it's something that we can discuss as well but really I think one is intellectual curiosity that's really important um, you need to have a really good mind a good brain an analytical brain because the world is complex and what is a journalist's job a journalist's job is to explain complex events to the larger public right so you need to be able to do that journalism is also about communication so you need really good communication skills. You need good language skills. Um, I think you also need a certain kind of personality. You need to persist. You need to be very persistent to get to the bottom of a story. You need to be able to work really hard. The students who produced the video that you saw before we started our presentation, I mean, they worked close to 24 hours a day towards the end. They were shooting at night, they were going to classes during the day, they were editing at night. So that is the kind of effort that it takes to become a successful journalist. Right? So these are some of the qualities that we look at. And um, I think the specific question really is, is, is about, you know, which part of the application form is important. I think everything is important because we try we have all these different things to, to try and get an idea of what you are like as a person. What motivates you? Do you have the desire and the skills to be a good journalist today? Okay, let me go to the next question. This is from Catherine O. Young. Is experience in journalism essential if the applicant doesn't hold a bachelor with honors at the time of applying? Uh, I think pretty much yes. Um, the basic, one of the basic academic qualifications really is, is, is a bachelor's honors degree. Now we have had students who have had fairly significant journalism experience, but never had, uh, didn't have uh, an honors degree. And we have admitted them. So if you don't have a basic bachelor's honors degree, um, you need to have something else that would demonstrate to us and to the university that you would be able to, 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 you know, to, to successfully undertake this course of study. And this could be prior professional experience, and it should be prior, uh, or it could be other factors as well. Um, all right, how to confirm JMSC received the mail supporting materials or not? Now, I would leave this to, uh, to, to um, Jason to, to answer, and he will get back um, to you perhaps in the chat way. Then, Yun Yi Wang, I have been admitted by another university, but my ideal one is HKU. So, can I agree to the other university's offer currently and wait for JMSC's result at the same time? Um, a lot of this really depends. You know, obviously, you cannot accept two offers. You cannot study in two uh, universities simultaneously. Um, many universities, when they make you an offer, um, also make you pay up. You know, make you pay the first installment of fees. We have we have had students who have taken who have accepted offers from other universities who have even paid the first installment of fees and then have come to us. 
uh, finally saying that HKU is the place that I want to uh, come to. So yes, um, even after you have received an offer, it is possible for you to, uh, you know, to, to, to join us as well. Um, I have heard from some students, uh, actually these, these are moving really quickly now. So I'm going to just pick them at random now. Picona Blanca. Oh, come back, come back question. Okay. Hi, my bachelor's degree marking is not done through the honor system in my country. They mark it differently. The direct translation in English doesn't state honors, but just a literal translation. Would it be okay if it... Would that be okay? It should be equivalent to honors to two. Yes, there are many countries which don't have a formal degree which says bachelor honors. Uh, but as long as they are equivalent and as long as the University of Hong Kong um, feels that this is an equivalent qualification, there is no problem with that. So the thing to do really is apply. Send us your qualifications and if there's a problem, we will get back to you and we will find a way to get around the pro uh, problems. So don't worry too much about all of this. The thing is to apply. Let us look at um, your qualifications. If there's a problem, we will get back to you. Um, Qingwai, is it harder for people who don't have journalism background to study the program or to enter the program? Um, no, it doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, even if you don't have a journalism background, it's perfectly all right. In fact, this is meant for a variety of people. Whatever your background is, as long as you have the aptitude, as long as you have the desire, as long as you have the right skills, we will help you to become a journalist. So you don't need prior experience. Some have prior experience, others don't have prior experience of journalism. It doesn't matter. What we are looking for is the desire, passion and the qualities that we feel make a good journalism. And if we see that in you, it doesn't matter what you've done before. Okay, jo uh, Joanna, can our referee send their reference after? Yeah, that should be fine. Um, and once more, all the technical questions about the application process and so on, uh, Jason will, will, will respond to you. When will we be uh, informed whether we are shortlisted for the writing test? Once more, it will be slightly before, so we, we will let you know by the first week of, of February or so. Tanya Sahada, there's a bachelor student from India need to share TOEFL score if the medium of instruction was English. How should I show that the degree is equivalent? Yeah, we've had a number of students from India. So that is, if you, as long as you've got a, a, a bachelor's degree from uh, a, a recognized Indian university, that is not a problem. And yes, you are encouraged to do your, uh, your TOEFL as well. Ah, there are multiple attendees typing, so I think there are more questions coming up. Let me see, let me go back a little and see if there's anything that I missed. Okay, Chun, a question for Thomas, please. Do you think Hong Kong's open press is under increasing scrutiny from Beijing? Will this influence the way JMSC select its program contents? No, the answer is... Let me start with your second question first. No, it absolutely will not influence the way JMSC selects its program content. Is Hong Kong's open press under increasing scrutiny? I think it's quite clear it is under increasing scrutiny. But the question really is, it is you know, it's been 1997, Hong Kong returned to Chinese sovereignty. And by any measure, the Hong Kong press, even though people are really worried about this issue, Hong Kong has a vibrant press. It has got strong free press traditions. It has also got a strong tradition of open debate. And you just have to see, I mean, you look back at what happened during Occupy Central, right? And if you did not see freedom of expression then, I mean, you were never going to see it, right? So Hong Kong is still a place where people express themselves. You can write what you want. You can say what you want. And Hong Kong University itself and all the universities are Hong Kong, in Hong Kong are deeply, deeply committed to the freedom of expression and the freedom of academic inquiry. So these are sacred things which are going to continue uh, no matter what. Okay, where... What, um, ba, 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 ba. 
Okay, there are a lot of questions about the actual degree qualification. Um, English laws. Okay, I think you read it exactly. Um, let me go all the way down and see if there's anything. What percentage? All right, you need, what percentage of applicants will be flunked in written test and interview? Now, there is no fixed percentage, right? I mean, it, it really depends from year to year. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're, uh, it really depends on what kind of people are sitting uh, the, the exam. Now, let me tell you, this is a very competitive process. In some years, we get as many as over 600 applicants for roughly 60 to 70 uh, places. So it's extremely competitive. Um, I will tell you that much. And I would also encourage you, the only way to really answer these questions is for you to apply, right? And if you feel that you have got it in you, I think you should just apply. Uh, Maria, okay. Okay, I think most of your questions are being answered very, very rapidly by all the wonderful people who are helping out. So I'm just watching the questions and the answers go by. Um, okay, let me take, here's one, uh, Junru Wan. As a Chinese student in the States for the four-year university, all right, if, you, if you've done your degree in the U.S., you don't need to um, send in TOEFL scores. This is a reply to Junru Wan's question. Okay, Mavis Chu, will we receive training of journalism in Chinese if we are accepted by the program? No, you know, one of the things that uh, we are an entirely English language program. Um, and though do we do have courses, we, we have a strong emphasis on training uh, people to report on events in China, uh, we really train people in English to work in English language media. So um, you won't get Chinese language training in journalism um, at JMSE. Okay, there's, uh, is it indispensable? Yeah, work experience is always useful. Okay, uh, Tanya Sahadas. Okay, once more you've said, Gain, you know, um, why don't you just send in, send in your application? And if there's a problem and if, if, if the university says you need to do the TOEFL, then we'll come to it at that point of time, right? So um, my advice to you really is, is just send in your application and perhaps you won't have to do the TOEFL. Qingwai, how is the recognition of the program overseas, especially in the United States? Now, Hong Kong U is a globally, it's one of the top universities in the world, between the top 20 and 30 in the world. And our program also, JMSE journalism program also, is well recognized. Um, and so, in terms of are these qualifications going to be recognized elsewhere? Yes, definitely they will be.
Okay, if I graduated from one of the Hong Kong universities, do I need to submit the TOEFL uh, results? No, I mean, if, if, if you did your basic degree in English, you will not have to do it. And this is in response to KW's uh, question. Let's see what else you guys are asking. Okay, let me take a couple of the questions. There are a couple coming up. Uh, one is, I, could you elaborate on financial aid and scholarships? Um, we have a limited number of scholarships. Um, we never have enough for everybody who wants, but I'd like to think that we've never been able Deserving candidates, we have always managed to find to support them in some way or the other. So once more, the f I think the first step really is to get that application in and help us to understand you, um, what your motivation is. And then if we feel that you will do really, really well here, we will find ways to help you to the extent that we can. That is about um, scholarships. Okay, there are a couple about internships now. In what way will JMSC help students find internships? Now we have a full-time internship coordinator and what he does, and we have a network of relationships with news organizations across the region. And so what we do is we try and match employers and students. So we put you in touch with employers. At the end of the day, it's the employer who's going to make the decision. But we put you in touch with employers. We help you to you know, to, to, to do your CVs, your cover letters. We, we, uh, we find places uh, for you to intern in. Um, and so this is an important part of what we do. Though I must say the internship itself is not something that is essential for you to get your degree, but this is something that most students want to do and do as well. And so we have a full-time person matching students with internships, and which is why a large, large proportion of our students every December uh, go out across the region to get internships. Maria has asked internships are paid. Um, unfortunately, it really depends on the news organizations. Uh, some of the larger news organizations do pay 
Uh, unfortunately, many news organizations do not pay, though we try and persuade everybody to, um, you know, to, to, to pay student interns, but the media industry is such that very often internships are not paid. Uh, but however, JMSC uh, tries to help you with your expenses. Sometimes we provide travel subsidies uh, to help people who go on internships outside Hong Kong and who need to travel far distances. And for May, uh, who's been asking about the internships, uh, for more details, I'd also go to go to. Um, I'd also point you towards our website. Um, go to the admissions page and the internships page, and that gives you, um, uh, you know, that uh, you you'll find a number of, of examples of where students have gone, what their experience has been, and so on and so forth. What companies, organizations. Uh, big companies, small companies. Um, they tend to be media organizations, but everything from big ones like CNN, so sometimes uh, to smaller ones in places like um, uh, Myanmar. Um, we have a variety of media organizations. So once more, I would say go to our, the JMSE website, um, go to the admissions page, and look at some of the material we, we have there about where our students have gone on internships. Hey, I noticed that we're talking about coffee here. Great. I don't know what the context is, but I second AJ. Coffee is important for journalists. Here's my cup over here. Somebody, Kevin's buying Starbucks coffees. Hey, I think I can see that you guys have really got down to brass tacks. How much does coffee cost at HKU campus? All right. <laughs> Stephanie says that HKU has the, has the cheapest Starbucks in the world. You sure about that, Stephanie? <laughs> okay, she's standing by her story. <laughs> and Kevin's backing her up. <laughs> oh no, he's saying it's the cheapest in Hong Kong. I notice the story is changing now from the cheapest in the world to the cheapest in Hong Kong. Okay, I think we've quite established now that Starbucks in Hong Kong is quite cheap. Aha, uh -huh. the coffee theme is continuing. I can see that coffee is really important to you guys. Owen wants to know, are we allowed to bring coffee to class then? <laughs> yes, you can, provided you give your instructor some as well. That's the rule. Okay, Maria, can you change from part-time to full-time? Um, I guess nobody's answered. Yes, you can. So, Maria, I hope that answers your question. Tanya Sahada, if I want to have a career in public relations, do you suggest the JMSC course? Well, the JMSC course can help you. Um, and we have a number of our students who have gone into public relations, but 
Hey, to be honest, let me tell you something. You know, what we really want to do is to train journalists. And uh, journalists and PR people are on two sides of the fence, right? So, yes, you can have a career. If you really want a career in public relations, nobody's going to stop you. But we hope that you remain a journalist. <laughs> food, uh, we've got one saying, no food and drink allowed in the lab. Yeah, that's true. Um, the one place that you can't bring coffee to is our media labs. Uh, but general lectures, nobody's going to stop you. You guys are really into food and drink, aren't you? Then this is always a good sign. <laughs> hey, people, how about, how about some questions about journalism, about JMSE? Come on, let's let, lift the tone of this conversation a little bit. Okay, ha 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 to you as well. <laughs> okay, Yang Yu Ching. I want to ask when will the final admission results be released? Because I have received offers from other universities in Hong Kong and HK is the first university. Yeah, I'm aware, we're all aware that other universities give out their offers before, but then we go through a much, much more rigorous screening process. We've got exams, we've got interviews, we've got um, events like this. So um, we can let you know by, um, well, the first week of March or so. Okay, Sanchita, what are the job prospects of a JMSC grad? And, and as I had mentioned earlier, and uh, this is looking back over the last 10, 12 years, if you are good and if you do well here, um, you will definitely get a good job, maybe not the day you graduate, uh, in a major news organization. So our top grads are always sort of scooped up pretty quickly. Um, once more, a lot of it really depends on the economy as well. But um, if you do well here, I think your job prospects are good. Okay, Maria has asked, could you elaborate on the students' assignments? Are we going to press conferences? Yeah, now, th actually, this is a good question because it does, uh, it, it, um, let me tell you a little bit about the kind of studying or the kind of work the students do. We are a very, very practical course. We train you to be journalists. So yes, from, you know, almost the first few days that you're in class, you're going to be going out and reporting things. Um, and you saw earlier the video that our students made on Occupy Central. They did it because they were covering Occupy Central. Um, so you will be going to press conferences, you'll be reporting, you'll be acting like a journalist from pretty much day one. I'm really interested in broadcasting and data. Are there any specializes in, yes. Uh, Sanchita, yes, we do have a data journalism course, and yes, we do have courses, um, it is in broadcast. Um, the, once more, the video in Occupy that you saw was done uh, by our, our video production uh, students. We also have a broadcast news course, and soon we will also be opening, uh, we will have 
a, a regular broadcast studio as well. So this is something that you know we, we uh, you definitely will be able to work on here. Okay, Victor, maybe, but as I, uh, this is Victor's question, which I don't think has been un, um, answered. Maybe I missed something. As I understand you, I can apply for master's program without journalism background. Yes, you can, Victor. I have five years experience working for the local TV company. That's fine. So do apply. Do you have any offers of internship? I mean, are you asking, will you get an internship after you join JMSC? Well, yes, if you apply for one, you would be eligible for, uh, uh, for an internship. Um, uh, yes, like all other students, you, you, you would be eligible for, uh, to apply for our internships. I have a question. This is Yu Feng. Will there be programs at Strain? train students to be correspondent anchors, such as how to look engaging on camera. Well, um, this is not one of the emphasis. Yes, we will have broadcast studios, but looking appealing on camera, all this is not one of the things that we focus too much on. Um, it's a useful skill to have, but it's not hard to get. And also with the changes now in the media industry, um, the number of jobs really for anchors and so on is going is, is not that high. Um, so uh, we will have we do have courses in broadcast journalism, but nothing that really focuses on how do you appear on camera. We teach you to be a good reporter and that's really the focus of what our program is. Uh, Bowen, are we required to submit any final projects to graduate this program? No, you're not required to uh, submit any final project. It's all, it's basically, it's coursework. Uh, you need to finish 10 courses. Chun, what in your opinion is a good reporter? And this goes back to, to, to some of the things that um, I talked about earlier. Who is a good reporter? What does a good reporter need to be? Um, a good reporter needs, first of all, to be persistent. And why do you need to be persistent? Because nobody wants to talk to you. Uh, it's really hard. And the people who want to talk to you are the people who want you, who really, you know, who want you to, to, to put their point of view across. To really get to the truth is hard. So you need to be very persistent. Um, you need to be hardworking. Um, and you need to have an analytical mind as well, because people tell you different things. You need to be evaluate. You need to evaluate different kinds of evidence, and you need to be able to come to the truth so that you can present the truth to the public. Okay, a lot of questions about gear, about equipment which all of which I think uh, are being answered very successfully by everybody so let me just see if any unanswered questions I don't see any I think you guys Okay, folks, it's 10.59, so we've got about a minute left, um, and keep typing, but I'm, I'm going to uh, use this opportunity, take this opportunity once more to uh, uh, thank all of you uh, for being here. Um, we've had, we have people in the chat room, I think, from pretty much all over the world, um, and so thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And do stay in touch with us. Keep typing these in. We, 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 we will finish all these questions that we have here.
but do stay in touch with us. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning of a conversation with all of you, right? It's not the end of the conversation. Um, so keep emailing all of us. Uh, all our email contact details are on our website. So do get in touch, get in touch with me, get in touch with Jason, get in touch with AJ, get in touch with our alums. And we really love to hear pr uh, from you. Um, and okay, here's one more about scholarship. Now, what is my chance of getting a scholarship? Now, this is a question that everybody asks. And it's a question that is almost impossible to answer until we see the entire pool of applicants. But once more, take my word for it. If we feel that you're somebody that we need to deserve and we want to support, you've got great background, you've got, we think you've got a great future, we think you've got potential, we will find, we will find some way to support you, right? So, I think the only question I can give to all of you who are asking about scholarships is number one, scholarships are limited. Number two, we will try our best to support everybody we believe deserves to be supported. And number three, unless we see your application, unless we talk to you, it's really hard for us to make a decision. So I would urge you have, if you're interested in the program, have the courage to put that application in. Don't worry about scholarships. Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? Just ask yourself one question. Do you want to be a journalist and do you want to study at HKU? If your answer to both these questions are yes, put in that application. All the other questions really are secondary. We'll figure all of that out. Just ask yourselves two questions. Do I want to be a journalist? And do I want to be a journal? Do I want to study at HKU? And if you, if you, if you, if you feel inside you there's a big yes to both of these questions, just put that application in, right? And then we will continue this conversation. Okay, so with that, um, it's time, I think, for us all to wind up. And once more, thank you very much, both from me and from all the team, uh, whom you can't see, unfortunately, because we've just got this one little camera in front of the... Uh, uh, in front of the computer, uh, but um, we've been working very hard connecting with you. So thank you very much. And